So now the last step is just to wrap the track back around the sprocket and pin it in place. Now, in preparation for putting the pin in, since this is a press fit style pin, I cleaned up uh, all the rust and uh, everything on both the bore and the pin. And a, a little quick test fit showed that for however much uh, ball breaking there was taking it out, this thing just slides right back in, which I thought was um, a little strange. I don't think these these press fit ends are tapered. Uh, maybe somebody will correct me. I, I, I only measure these on one spot. So I don't know. Anyway, what I did, I, I put some bluing on there and I put it in and rotated it around a little bit to see where it was where it was touching. And it's got some contact area, not a whole hell of a lot. So I'm uh, just a little bit concerned about it eventually working its way loose when I when I put this together. So what I think I'm going to do is prick punch this in a couple areas and, uh, and then when I send it in it'll have a little bit more of a press fit to hold itself together. Another thing I could do is once it's fully in I could uh, give it a little, little zap, a little tack weld in one spot that's uh, easy to grind off but will prevent it from falling out. I'm not sure if I'll do that because I just don't like welding on things that aren't supposed to be welded. So if there's one thing I've learned working on stuff like this, even, even stationary power, anything heavy, you can never have too many wooden blocks. Doesn't matter what they're made out of. Oak is good, but you know, it doesn't matter. So you really gotta get, get creative uh, to keep everything in place. Uh, and also this uh, cable puller really helps. So I hooked it on this end of the track and pulled it straight up. I hooked it onto the, uh, the uh, grab handle there. Got it right up into the sprocket and I wedge that wood in there to keep it in place and then doing the same thing here with the tracks because as it sags of course it'll uh, take up a lot of a lot of length so you want to block that track up as much as you can and as you can see I've only got one one uh, tooth to go and everything will line up and I'll send that pin through so we got it some pry bars and sledgehammers and everything got it uh, into the right slot. I got to just flop it right into place, and there you go. Now, before I put the pin in, there were these washers that came out. I neglected to record this in my track breaking video. But these washers, or spacers, whatever you want to call it, go right into these counter bores in here, uh, in there, and in there. And I can't remember the sequence and direction that they came out. Because on each side there was a thin one and a thick one. And the thick one has a flat side and a chamfered side. But I'm just going to, I don't think it really matters all that much, it stacks up to the same thickness. But I'm going to put the thin one in first because that's the most delicate so being but in the bottom of the hole there it'll protect it and then this one just kind of looking at the the uh, the link here and looking at the wear on this uh, this is it's pretty uh, rough and rusty it's not smooth or anything and this is a little flatter and uh, not exactly shiny but it looks like it was seated up against it that way with the chamfer uh, facing the camera. So the chamfered side, this is the flat side facing us now, the chamfered side will go will, will go in against the uh, thin spacer. Alright, so we're ready to go. I uh, anti-seized everything, the hole, the pin, the washers. Now uh, one, one thing to note, I, I did try to dimple this a little bit, I sort of did. Uh, but this is uh, semi-hardened material, so I wasn't able to get a real good dimple on it. But I was able to, to rough it up a little bit. The other thing that I noticed, I measured these a little closer. And uh, this might be because this is, this is just an old pin, but I think it's made this way. One end of the pin is slightly smaller in diameter than the other pin, about five thousandths. So... That explains why it goes through most of the way, 
but not all of the way. Um, so I, I wasn't sure about that in, uh, initially, so right before it came out, I marked it. I made this uh, cut here with an angle grinder, just so I know that this is the inside end of the pin. And as it turns out, it is slightly different. So I'm going to put it back in the same way. Now, if your master pin is uh, a tighter fit, or if it's new, you bought a new one, or something like that, um, and it doesn't slide in as easily as mine, the other technique you could, you could use is you uh, clean everything up like I did, and then throw the master link, or the master pin, into the freezer for a while. Or if you have liquid nitrogen or, or uh, dry ice or something, throw it in there, let it, let it freeze real, real good. And then uh, heat all this stuff up with a torch so it's nice and warm. Get everything aligned, and then while this is still warm and the pin is still cold, slide it through, and then just leave it alone for a couple minutes while everything comes to temperature and locks together. But I will not need to do that. So, see I have these washers in the way they should be. I'll slide that together. And that's it. Flush on both sides. Uh, that's all there is to it. Went in kind of tight, not super tight. Held a lot easier going in than coming out. Well, let me tell you what. Um, I think that's good. I uh, I might ruminate on this and put a little a little uh, tack weld there. I'm not really sure. The only thing left to do is take that last track shoe that I took off to. Uh, get at this with my big C-clamp. I'm just going to bolt that track shoe back on with some new bolts because of course I torched off the old ones. Now the last thing to do is to tighten the track. You just use a regular old grease gun on the grease fitting there. As you can see it's sagging quite a bit. I'm going to tighten it up just about where I think it should be and then once I drive it back and forth a couple times and let everything kind of settle in I'll uh, readjust it, but I just want to get some tension in here. There's actually a sticker right on the uh, on the battery box, and uh, it says, I believe for the front, the decal is half ripped off, but the uh, sag, if you put a flat you know, two by four or something from the uh, support roller to the idler, it should be roughly two inches of sag, plus or minus a quarter of an inch. Start pumping this, I can see it moving already. And of course the zerk pops off. Well, everybody, that about sums it up. Uh, this has been in my garage for quite some time since uh, I think I bought this in December or early January, and it is uh, mid-May now. Of course, I waited about two months for that for that shaft to be fixed that uh, got destroyed by the pilot bearing. So this is maybe a month or two behind schedule, but whatever. That's the way it goes. And uh, so that, that's how it's done. Uh, stay tuned next for a video on how to adjust the steering clutches and brakes and maybe a couple other miscellaneous things. But... That's a full, as far as I'm concerned, a full job for uh, a steering clutch. Because while you're at it, you might as well replace all the things that I have done in these previous videos. If it's just the clutches, if just the clutch is bad, why not do the brake band, the bearing seals, the track adjuster? It's not that much extra money, and it saves you a ton of extra work because nobody likes breaking a track more than once. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this. I hope this uh, educates some of you people out there. I've already gotten comments on some of my other videos uh, of this video. 
that uh, are really positive and um, I'm, I'm glad that you guys like this and that it's helping out some people out there that are working on machines just like this. Um, I'm happy to help you guys. Thank you for watching and subscribing and supporting. Uh, if you enjoy my videos enough, uh, feel free down below. There's a Patreon account and also a, uh, an email address that you can donate to through PayPal if you so desire. And uh, as always, just thanks for watching. Keep subscribing and keep liking and commenting. I love it. Thanks very much and stay tuned for more.